Hey guys, welcome back to Shiloh Smith Farms. Uh, we wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. It's been a while since we've posted a video, been a while since we shot a video. Uh, as you can probably imagine with being a foster family and having three of our own children, uh, two grandkids, this has been a pretty busy time of year. It's also been busy with my uh, regular job, uh, trying to get ready to take off a, a, a week solid and not have to go into the office for a while. And so uh, it's just been kind of a crazy time of year for all of us and dealing with the stuff that everybody deals with and trying to get ready uh, for our Hereford calves to arrive. They should be here in the next couple of weeks. And today what we're gonna do uh, here on the homestead, I'm gonna show you us pulling, stretching some field fence, uh, some of the things that I use uh, to do this job. Uh, not necessarily, uh, again, as we always say, this is not how to stretch a field fence. This is how I stretch my field fence. I'm gonna also show you a homemade uh, fence stretcher that uh, is made out of one stud length two by four. I'll show you that. I'll show it to you on the fence. I'm gonna show you what I'm using, uh, a ratchet strap, hooked to the hitch of my truck uh, to do this long stretch. And then I'm also gonna show you something that I have found, uh, haven't seen these in many places, uh, that I feel like they're superior to the old fence staples. And I'm not the kind of guy that usually goes for anything new. If there's one thing that you could say is I like old stuff. Uh, our favorite country singer, a young man named Mo Pitney, actually sings a song, I like the old stuff better. Email's clever, but I'd rather read a letter because I like the old stuff better. But when something comes along that is superior, uh, I like to share it with you. And so I'm gonna show you that. Uh, these are called cat's claw fasteners. So if you'll just stay with us in this video, remember, like and subscribe, ring the little bell to get the notifications. Stay with us uh, to the end of the video. Uh, I've got some things I want to talk to you about, some things that are important, and if you'll just stay with us, we would appreciate it. Let's go and take a look at some of these things that we're using to stretch this field fence with now. Come along. All right, guys, here's what we've been doing this morning. Uh, I've just pulled about a 260-foot uh, straight run on perimeter fencing. Uh, this is Beckert Gaucho field fence, 48-inch high. This is graduated fence, and what I mean by that, you probably already know, I don't mean to ever make you think that I, I think I'm smarter than you, but it's graduated. The, the spacing of the horizontals are get smaller as you come down. So uh, as you look at this, you've got about a two inch square down here and you get up to about a six inch at the very top wire. And so this is recommended for horses and for cattle but we've kept our goats in here. When you've got young goats uh, with horns, sometimes they will get through some of these lower uh, graduations and get their horns stuck and you have to come out and undo them. And for some people that's the end of the world, but to me, it's just something that I deal with. So yeah, this is about a 260 foot pull on this stretch. And this is my fence stretcher. As you can tell by looking at this, this is a, an eight foot two by four cut in half. I've drilled one, two, three, four, five, six holes through here. I've got half inch lag bolts, washers, and nuts. And I actually sandwich this wire between these two by fours. Uh, it's pretty important. It's kind of hard to tell right now, but it's important when you start this that you keep these boards lined up with your vertical uh, on your fence line because uh, you want to pull fairly even. And what I had to do today, I had to pull my truck out here in the pasture. I had nothing that I could hook to. So I buckled these down, bolt them down good and tight, wrapped a chain up high, down low. I come down, parked my truck in line with the fence, hooked this ratchet strap to my truck hitch, and then pulled the tension. Now, if we'd have filmed this as we was doing it, uh, I'll answer some questions for you. Uh, what you have to do, wrap the other end, 
do your termination knots down on the starting end, unroll this fence down the fence line, get all this hooked up, start giving some tension, and then you're gonna have to walk back and forward on the fence line, standing the fence up, making sure it doesn't get caught on any of the, the T-posts that you've got uh, on, your, on your perimeter fence. And it will, there'll be places you gotta go loosen, come back out here, ratchet, go straighten up, ratchet, go straighten up. And, but if you take your time, uh, you can get this done with a ratchet strap. Uh, if I'd have had a tree closer, I wouldn't have used my truck. I'd have, I'd have strapped to a tree or a power pole, whatever I've got, that's what I use. And so I've got some come alongs. And as you would imagine, as I go to use them, uh, they are broke. So instead of going and buying something else, I keep these in my truck for strapping down loads. So I just use this, pull it good and taut, get it up there, get the termination knot, get everything uh, temporarily set on all the, the posts going down the line. And then I use something new, and that's what I'm gonna show you next, these cat's claw fasteners. If, you're ever, if you ever are like me, you get tired of plumbing wood fence post, and then the first thing you do when you pull your wire is take out a hammer and start beating staples into the post that you spent all this time trying to get good and tight in the ground. It seems silly to me, and it's always, I'm not a carpenter, but it seems to me I'm always having to hammer those staples at an angle where I just cannot hardly get it to work. And these cat's claws does away with that. It lets you use a cordless drill in place of a hammer. These are replaceable, removable. It, it's just, again, in my opinion, far superior to a fence staple. A little more expensive, yes, but if you count your time as anything, I think you'll like these cat's claw fasteners. I'm gonna show those to you now. These are the fasteners that I was telling you about that replaces fencing staples. Cat's claws fasteners. I'm sure my editor can probably put a link. I know you can get these off of Amazon. I, of course, don't make any money off of that because not enough of you have subscribed for me to make any money. Subscribe like comment get the notifications help me help me tell everybody tag cat's claws tell them this guy is doing a commercial for you i don't really care i'm just playing but these are in my opinion far superior to fence and staples and let me just kind of show you what you have you have a self-tapping screw and then a claw for a clamp and if you can look here here, just what a good job these do fastening fence. Of course, as you can tell, if you make a mistake, something happens, you can take this fence down, unscrew with your screw gun, you're back in business. Now, I had seen Cody Harris using a pneumatic fence stapler from the Cowboy Way, Alabama. I thought, man, that'd be nice not to have to swing a hammer on those fence staples. And I went and looked at the cordless version of that fence stapler, and it was around $800. And so I said to myself, I said, self, you can't afford that, not to put up a fence on your own property. Now, Harris, he, he actually fences for a living, so I can understand why he would have that. And that's probably better in the long run. But if you're like me and taking care of one homestead, and you want a faster way of setting your fences, these cat's claws. As I said, I usually don't like the new stuff. I like the old stuff, but this really does work. It does the job. And I'm about to cut the end of this fence off. I'm gonna wrap it, and then I'll shoot some more of these in the backside, and Cassidy can film it and let you see them going in. I know you can tell just by looking at it how it works, but we'll show you on a couple of them nonetheless, okay?
uh, as with everything uh, here at Shiloh Smith Farms, uh, we've had a change order. We were going to run from the long perimeter that I just ran this morning from that corner down to the gate with the remnant of wire that I had. You know, it's supposed to be like a 330 foot roll, I think is what it says, maybe 300. I think it is 300. In my mind, it was 330. So I told you that was about a 260 foot pull. So if it's 300, that would only left me 40 foot and it's about 60 foot to this gate. So when I stretch the wire across there, it wouldn't reach, but it will reach from the other corner to this gate. So we just moved the wire down and I'm gonna go put a corner uh, an H brace up on that corner and then we'll stretch it to the gate this way. And then I'll have my next roll of wire I'll do this little section and the other 260 foot run. And hopefully I'll have enough with my remnants to be able to make that stretch. So just stay with us. my fence stretcher together using my lag bolts as you can see there's holes drilled all the way through it's still kind of aggravating getting them to line up you kind of have to do a lot of wiggling and moving around because every time you take it back apart it seems like these holes kind of get boogered up a little bit and so you got to work at it uh, However, if you go to one of the big box stores where they supply parts for tractors and things, a stretcher bar with shims that does the same job is, the last time I looked, it was $269. And so I've got about $4 worth of lag bolts and nuts washers and what used to be about a two dollar ninety eight cent two by four but if you went and tried to replace this baby today you're probably going to spend about i don't know eighteen thousand dollars i know what i got so if anybody needs any of these built for the price of materials eighteen thousand dollars for the two by four four dollars for the lag bolts and about oh an hour of my time because i'm gonna eat lunch on you I'll build you one of these. It won't cost you about 20 grand, okay? That's how you save money when you're a homesteader. All right, as you can see, these two two by fours sandwich this wire all the way down. And what I was talking about earlier, you wanna keep this pretty even with your verticals here. You're sandwiching these horizontals you're not so much relying on these verticals to hold the pressure as you are sandwiching this over these wires, these permanent wires. And then that way, when you pull, you ought to get a pretty straight pull. When I say that, I mean even, top and bottom. And so torque these down good and tight so that you're, you're holding that wire really secure. And as you can see, I'm using one, two, three, four, five lag bolts to hold this. If money were no object, I'd go back and buy two two by fours and instead of splitting it in half, I'd leave them longer so that I could put another one at the top wire and the bottom wire. But this has worked for me so far. Uh, you may wonder, you may say, well, you're using five bolts, but you've got six holes. A professional homeowner does not worry about such trivial matters as using every hole that's available. We use what we have and we only buy things that we absolutely have to buy. So now we're going to hook up the, the chain uh, from the top, the bottom, pull at the middle and try to stretch this wire. <laughs>
right, guys. So today you've seen our homemade fence stretcher, our ratchet straps in use. It sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's harder. Uh, these cat's claw fasteners, I, I really think uh, can help somebody uh, with any of their fencing needs. I'm also gonna use them. I'm fixing to build a chicken coop inside my pole barn and I'm gonna use these to hold cattle panels onto two by fours. Uh, and I think they'll work real well. Again, anywhere you would usually use a staple, uh, you can use these and use your cordless drill. And I'll remind you of the motto here at the channel. This is how I stretch the fence, not how you stretch the fence. I'll never tell you that this is the only way to do anything that I'm doing, except for one thing. And here we are two days after Christmas, and I want you to know, uh, all 711, ever how many you are right now, hoping to get to a thousand here by the time we get the new Herefords in. Uh, but the only thing I'll ever tell you that this is the only way, and that is Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so I may show you a lot of different ways. You may learn some things you shouldn't do by watching me. You may learn a few things that maybe you didn't know, you never thought of just because I stumbled onto it with dumb luck, but it wasn't dumb luck uh, when I found Jesus. The, the Holy Spirit opened his word to me. He showed me that I was a sinner and that I was hopeless on my own, that the reason that Jesus came at Christmas was because man could never save himself. And so God intervened with man and sent his son, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died a substitutional death, and rose victoriously bodily from the grave and is seated to the right hand of God the Father right now, making intercession for men and women and boys and girls. And this isn't a preaching channel. This is a homestead channel. But let me tell you, if you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation. Uh, today's the day for anything you want to do. If, if you've been thinking about starting a homestead, you've been thinking about getting chickens, you've been thinking about getting goats. I had a man stop while I was on the roadside of the fence this morning working, asked me about dairy goats and said he wants to come by and pick my brain. And I told him I'd be glad to share any information that I have. But if you're going to, if you've thought about doing something, today's the day to do it. Today is the day, if you've ever thought about trusting Jesus, if you've ever had any curiosity about Jesus, today is the day to meet him. Today is the day, if you thought about planting a tree, uh, the old saying is the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second best time is today. Start today. Start where you're at, dream big, and never give up. And you'll just see where God will carry you in this life if you just put forth the effort. So I uh, hope that you'll stay with us. I hope you'll pray for us. We'll pray for you. Uh, come back, subscribe, like the channel, comment. Uh, if you don't like the preachiness of the channel, I'm sorry. You probably just need to go somewhere else because uh, before anything else, I'm a Christian. And so if you don't like that, you're probably not going to like the channel and you can go find somebody. I see some of the people I follow. They say, oh, we're not going to get into none of that. Our faith is private. I worry about somebody whose faith is private. We are supposed to let our light shine so that others can see and God would receive the glory. So thank you for being with us today. Please come back and see what's going on with the rest of the farm build. Thank you and God bless.